Hello, hello, hello. Hi, hi, hi. Welcome. Okay, come on in the room. We're going to talk about um, you got stuff that you make and you're trying to sell it and nobody's buying it. Let's talk about it. I can speak from my own personal experience because that's what I do. <laughs> I make stuff and I try to get people to buy those things from me. Now, does it always work? No, it does not. But that's why you have to have tough skin and be okay with the fact that there are going to be people that will come and they don't want your stuff. They don't like it. They they just they didn't they didn't see the vision that you saw when you created it. And they, you know, some people might just say this is ugly, some people might say they don't want it, some people may say nothing at all. People will look at your stuff and keep going. You have to go back to a couple a lot of videos <laughs> you have to go back to when i first started um my um this this whole you know recording and showing people the process of making things and then whether or not it actually was going to be uh functional and work for you um when i first okay so i've been sewing since i was seven years old i've been making stuff my whole life um, I just find it to be something to do, something to spend my time with. Now, in the process of me creating things, there came a point when I said I was going to sell stuff to people. So I made, st I did, um, I made garments for my friends. Um, you know, my sister, I made stuff for her and her friends. <laughs> I have a funny story about that top. Too. My, my sister and her friends are going out, you know, hanging out or whatever. And they were like, oh, you can make us some clothes. Or they saw me making clothes, doing like a whole little fashion line or whatever. And I made them some tops. But at the time, back then, this is a long time ago, I did not, uh, know how to, I didn't, I didn't gauge stretchy fabric and stretchy fabric that you see today is not the same as stretchy fabric back then trust and believe there is a difference um there's quite a few differences i don't um we're not gonna discuss you know have a baby face <laughs> but i just didn't gauge that process but that's besides the point but well, actually, no, I can tie it in because sometimes when you're picking things out for people and you have your estimations and what you configure that's going to work and what's not going to work and how it should be, blah, 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 blah. And then once the full process has gone through and you come back out with it and you're just like, oops, what can you do? You have to. I would highly suggest and recommend going about the same way that hairdressers do. Hairdressers will burn your scalp and cut your skin and keep it moving. Sorry, my bad. Whoops. And they collect coin at the end, even though they clearly burned you. Clearly you cut me, <laughs> but you still got the coin. If you treat everything like that, you just dismiss it. You brush it off. You let it go. You don't um hold on to it in any way, shape, or form. Are they coming? God, do I get some of this My bad, my bad, my bad. Yes, I'm at work. So I'm in the process of, I'm telling y'all at the same time, I'm telling y'all at the same time in the midst of what I do simultaneously. This is a simultaneous type of thing. That's what business is like. If anybody told you it was any other different way,
that's because they didn't tell you the beginning. In the beginning, it's just like this. You are going to have whatever it is that you do. And then you're going to have the thing that pays your bills. So you have the thing that pays your bills, job that you go to and work at. And then you have the thing you're passionate about, the thing you just desire and wish that you could do every single day. I will tell you that there was one day um, I used to, okay, I used to work at Auntie Anne's. And, you know, the pretzel place, I, 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 I was that pretzel girl. I was, you know, rolling dough, flipping it, making it a heart and, you know, attaching the feet or whatever. But there was a um, bridal expo that came up and I said, I'm going to go. I had worked for a company previously a couple of years before where that's what they did. We would go and we would market their products, sell their services. So I was like, I've done it for another business. Why can't I do it for myself? Of course I can do it for myself. I can go out there and I can make sure that I get people to come on out and, you know, support my business. Know that my business exists. Keyword right there, page into the fact that I said I wanted people to know that my business existed. That's it. That's it. Have you have to go higher. You have to have better expectation. I did achieve what I wanted, though. I achieved having people know that my business existed. And that is true. Okay, so what are we talking about? Um, so people knew that my business existed from doing that bridal expo. Oh, the reason I'm telling you I was doing the bridal expo is because I'm trying to make sure I pay attention to my job <laughs> while I'm doing this recording right now. Okay, so um, I did the expo and in doing that, because I was so passionate about people knowing that I'm a seamstress, I can make your wedding dress, I can make your veil, I can make your bridesmaids dresses, I can make your groom's bow tie, cummerbund, vest, what do you ever you want? I, I can do it. I'm here for you. That two-day experience, almost three days because it was a day before the setup. So I spent three days and I literally did not sleep for over 24 hours. I don't remember I don't remember going to sleep. I remember just working, 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 working. I worked to the point of it wasn't even exhaustion because I was so passionate about it. I was so passionate about it. I mean, it almost brings tears to my eyes to think about the fact that I was that passionate. And for one day, for a few weeks, I mean, for for a few, for one weekend, for a few hours, <laughs> Like 72 hours, I completely was able to fulfill my passion. I was able to fully live and be immersed and do that. Granted, I didn't make no money. I didn't make any money because I only went and did it. I only did the expo because I wanted people to know that my business existed. Outside of that, I had no other reason to go. Hello. And we're on again. Okay. Um, sorry for the gaps of time. That's the cost. You have to do it because I'm not going to edit anything. That's no point. I want reality. I think when I first started this channel, I said that I wanted to make sure that I was showing people like what it was like to build from the ground up and keep going and doing it over and over. What do people want today?
So, like I was saying, <laughs> as I was saying, what was I saying? What was it? I was saying that, what was I saying about the story? The story, the story, the story. Golly. Customer service is my job. And it's a part of your business. Forever. Forever and ever and ever and ever. Give me a moment. I need a little coffee. Waffle this morning. I have not had no coffee. And I'm got to make me a cup of coffee. Ooh. Okay. I have my coffee going. So let me just tell you the story, even though I'm not in this shot. All right. So um, pretty much I had a day of my life where I was completely immersed in what it was that I was passionate about. And I had a wonderful good time. And when you find that you experience moments like that, uh, don't knock them. Don't feel like I only got this one moment because we will make that mistake of thinking that you only get one opportunity to fulfill one dream in your life. And that's not true. You get multiple times in your life to experience all the various different dreams and goals you have, even though they're far-fetched. I had a cousin that told me, she said, your dreams may feel as though they are intangible. She said, that's okay because you will get to them. She said, God feels like he's intangible, but God is tangible. For just as much as your dreams seem intangible, that's how much more they are tangible. God seems like he's intangible, but God really is tangible. Sorry to go so like on the spiritual side of it, but same thing, you know, God is near. Your dreams are near. Everything you want is near. You got to just believe in it. You got to have faith for it. You got to trust that I'm going to get to what I'm trying to do. It's a little hard sometimes. There are moments where it's just like, I I'm, I'm, I feel close in this moment. In that moment, I felt extremely close. In that moment when I did the bridal expo and I was doing it for three days straight, you know, setting up my stuff there the next morning. I think I had to be there at 8 a.m. before the doors even open or something like that. And, you know, I got my whole spread. I got my whole shebang. I got my portfolio with all my designs. I got all these dresses on mannequins. I've got this fabric. I got this crazy display up there and everything. And the three days come to an end. I felt so close to my dreams and goals of what I wanted. But after that third day, and then they're like, you got to be, you know, you got to break everything down and be out of the building by, I think it was like eight or 10 o'clock. I sat in my car in the parking lot. <laughs> Relieved that it was over because now I could get some sleep. But I felt so saddened that that was the end. I knew that when this had finished, I had to go back to work. And there's nothing wrong with that. It's nothing wrong with that. You have days where you get to fulfill your dream and do it and live it. I had a friend, uh, uh, this, uh, this, um, this, um, I had another opportunity to fulfill a dream. And when I got there, um, I said, they, they said something to me. I don't remember verbatim at the moment what they said, but they pretty much were just like, you live in a dream. You know, I'm like, I'm at work, you know? And they're like, you live in a dream child, whatever, which I understood that in the sense, yeah, you know, you don't just, you don't just do this, you know, but that's, that, that's the grace of God. You know, God will have people where when you trust God for, for something and believe him for it, and you just keep operating that way, you will have moments in your life where there are things that transpire, where it took people 
10 years to do what you did in a matter of, it just happened, you know, you know, the, the suddenly, the hookup, the God, the, your God. Yes. The Lord came in and was like, boo, I'm about to show them. They ain't even see you coming. But that's another story for another time. Excuse me. I can't include that story right now because it does not pertain to what we're talking about. But the fact that God will sometimes do something. You ever take your your uh your 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 uh your creamer and just shake it up yourself? Just make sure you don't shake it before it becomes into butter. But then you have like that froth and foam in your cup when you want it, baby. When you want it. Okay, so we are talking about selling your stuff. All right, so. So when you decide that you're going to sell something, you have to have a plan and an expectation. My plan and expectation for when I went to do the bridal expo was strictly I wanted people to know I existed. When it was over, I said, why didn't I want people to buy something from me? I mean, I told people I could make their their, their garter belts. You know, there, there, there's nothing you can't sew when you got a pattern. You know what I mean? When you create that pattern or buy the pattern. I've had customers come and be like, I want you to make this right here. And they went to the store and bought a pattern. I said, well, as long as you got the right size pattern, I, I, if that's what you really want, I mean, I'm going to still charge you for my labor. I'm still going to charge you for the fact that I have to cut out the pattern because I don't have to make the pattern for you. But yeah, boo. <laughs> Pause for just a moment again. Thanks. Hey, y'all. Thanks for waiting. You're the best. If you're still here watching, you are loved, you are precious, and you are highly favored by God. You sure are, ma'am, sir, child. All right. Okay. Like I said, I'm at work, so I got to do work, and I have to provide customer service. And we were talking about how I did not have any higher expectation or I went in with just desiring 
this one particular thing instead of me desiring something much more, which ultimately is what I wanted. I really wanted people to buy product from me. I really wanted people to buy, get something made from me. If they wanted me to make their garter belt, if they want to make their wedding dress, their veil, the, the bow tie, the vest, you know, ascot, whatever, the price majors, the, the flower girls dresses, the ring bear, the ring pillow. I wanted that. But the thing is, I went in saying, I just want people to know that I existed. And that's exactly what I got. So what's your expectation? What you trying to do? Where are you trying to go? What is it that you really, really want? So in hindsight, I should have desired more. I should have requested. I should have said, Nawazi, self, what do you want to gain out of doing this bridal expo or whatever event? So you fast forward four years. Fast forward four years and... Now, no, wait, 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 pause before I just skip over. Okay, so being uh, that I wanted people to know that I existed, there was this lady that would call me every year for this very unique bridal expo. And I asked her, like, where'd she get my number? <laughs> now, the problem is I never continued to show up. That's the thing. You have to show up. She would call me. She called me two years in a row for me to come and do it. But out of, um, I hate to say it, out of fear, pretty much what it boiled down to, uh, I didn't do it. Now, I didn't need to have fabric. I didn't need to have anything other than my portfolio. There's always somebody, and I learned this not too long ago, that you're always going to have grace with someone. There's going to be someone that comes along that's going to have grace for you. Either you take it or you don't take it. And I didn't take it. That lady called me two years consecutively. Like, are you ready this time? <laughs> if I ever find that lady and meet her, I'm be like, I'm sorry. You were asking. And really, God is just like, you said you wanted people to know you existed. People know you exist. And this lady over here calling you, but you don't never call her back like, yeah, I'm about to do what she emailed you. She called you two years consecutively. As a matter of fact, I think she called me like three or two, four different times about the event because they ended up adding a special one. She said, this one's more unique this time. It's more catered to what you do. It's not, you know, for people coming in, trying to come into a dress shop because I'm not a dress shop. I am a custom made kind of thing. You know, it's not... We're sitting down. We're looking at, you know, a blank piece of paper. We're sketching out what you want so that I can feel what you feel. And if the picture is what it's supposed to be, you let me know, yes, it's exactly what I want. And we go on and buy the fabric and everything. And I'm making patterns and we making smocks and all of that. You trying it on, you getting your fittings in, you know, I'm one of them, you know, let's get it in within three. <laughs> if we can make it happen within three, we're good. You know, and if we have one extra one, okay, I meet you the first time, we draw the sketch out, we, you know, discuss fabrics. If hopefully, you know, we are able to find the exact fabric. I've only had one customer where we couldn't find the fabric, no, two customers where we couldn't find the fabric the same day that we did our um, uh, consultation slash uh, measurements, you know, fitting or whatever you call, whatever you want to call that part. Um, but then I go on and, you know, I make the smock. After the smock's made and it fits perfectly, then we go ahead with the actual fabric and prayerfully everything works out just right. The weight's the same, the size the same. You wore what you were supposed to wear to the fitting. We're not going to talk about that because I love you. I, I love the people that come to get things made by me. I just wish I would wear... <laughs> what you was going to wear the day of because it changes the measurements of your body because it's custom made to fit you exactly, exactly. Let me repeat that, exactly. It's made to fit every single curve, shape, protruding, non-protruding area of your body because I mostly make fitted garments and I don't make those little quick whippersnapper type of garments. 
I don't do that. I make garments with a lining, with boning, and bras made inside the garment. But a lot of people don't want to get that. I don't know why. This is not a rant, so we're not going to talk about that. We're going to talk about you have a business. You have an idea. You have a craft. You got something you're trying to sell to make some money. And you just want people to buy it. And you understand why don't nobody want to buy it. Because don't nobody know you got it. <laughs> don't, enough people don't know you have it. We literally sit there and we think enough people know that I make this and I'm good. Or I do this and I'm good. No, you're not. Enough people do not know that you do this. I sat around for three days, two full days to be exact, of people walking past to get my information. I had a list of people that I acquired from that. And not nary one of those people got anything made from me. Not nary one. Not nary one, baby. But that that's... That's a part of it. That's a part of the process. That's a part of that's the cost you pay to be the boss. You got it? For real. It's the it's, it, it literally is the cost, the price, all of that. It is. And there's nothing you could do about it. You want to change it? You want to reinvent the will and change it? Go right ahead, sweetheart. You still gonna have some same, you're gonna have the same work to do that everybody been doing since the beginning of time. You have to let people know on a continuous, consistent basis what that you're there, that you exist. You stop, your business stops. You go, people go. People will see what you got to offer. And it's like that. It's, it's like a yard sale. As simple as a yard sale is, pull all the stuff outside of your house to the front yard, in the garage, in the driveway. Put it all out there for everyone to see. It's pretty much when people say, don't air out your dirty laundry. In business, you should air out your dirty laundry. Well, I mean, you know, keep your personal personal. But your personal sometimes tends to spill over into your business in little small incremental ways. And you just have to say, let me stop doing that in my personal life so that it doesn't affect my business. <laughs> it's true. It's true. But you do what you want to do. I'm trying to get my eyeliner to sharpen. It's not sharpening. Anywho. We're not here for a makeup session. We're here to talk about why you trying to sell what you have and ain't nobody buying your stuff because you're not talking about it. It's tomorrow. Eh. 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 Thank you so much for the love. It's tomorrow. <laughs> okay. What am I doing? I don't remember. Sorry for the distraction. See? You have distractions and you have to stay focused. This is real life business and I have a list of things I haven't done yet. That's the other problem. You ain't writing shiggity damn that's important that you should prioritize to do. So then you expect for it to get done on its own and it don't get done because guess what? Now, I'm talking to y'all, but I'm talking to myself. Whenever you, whoa, that's strong. Good God. Where's the karma? <laughs> it's too strong. My coffee is way too strong. Okay, we're talking about business and why so. Okay, so from my experience, you can also go to my website, noisescreations.com. The only thing you can buy on there is like three items right now. <laughs> But if you want to buy the kimono, please buy the kimono. You help a girl out for real. Now, that kimono was actually from, okay, so 
when you have your product, you know, whatever it is that you sell, you know, if you buy something and sell it or if you create something from scratch and sell it, whatever it is that you do, however you you got something and you want people to buy it from you, but ain't nobody buying the shiggy from you because I didn't mean shiggy like that. But, you know, it just the best way that I can say is. You have to you have to present it. You have to present it. You have to make it known that here I am. Here's this thing that I have. I have a bottle of water. What do I have? I took all my stuff out of my bag. Dang. I had some earrings that I was working on and I literally took it out the bag the other day. So I have these leather earrings that I make. This is why I stopped. One reason I stopped is because I ended up going to a I was going to sell them for Black Friday as a little thing, you know, for my 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 business was I was going to sell them for Black Friday. I ended up going and changing my plans and doing something else. That's something else. You have to not allow the distractions that come and the other little little whatnots in our day of living life to keep you from doing what you set out to do. Even if it's your mother. I love you, mom. I really love you. I'm just being honest right now. My mom's not holding me back. No, that's not it. That's an excuse. That's an excuse that everybody uses. So-and-so held me back. I had to go do this. I had to go do that. Now, within reason, you know, it was life or death over here. It was this or that. It was that. The house was on fire. My shoe was over there. Whatever. My real point is you got to keep rolling and going. And then I allowed the fact that I saw it being sold on a very well-known large website. I said, there's leather earrings over here. You can buy a kit. So I said, I needed to add a little something to mine. And I'm not trying to sit and be like, oh, woe is me. You can't have a woe is me mentality. You might have a, they didn't like my stuff. It kind of crushed because I like it and they don't like it. But there is somebody out there that likes your uniqueness. Like Copine. Copine is a very unique, different type of designs. But people like it. Some people are like, what is that? But it doesn't have to be that way. You're not the only one. Ain't that a song? Oh, that is a song. That's a song by Jordan Armstrong. I'm looking for my karma because I made my coffee way too strong. Super strong. It's almost where it's like, am I drinking mud? Borderline. Uh... Selling your stuff requires you to get up, move, and do something. Requires you to not give up just because you did it for a month, six months, a year. But you know what? The truth is, it's in that beginning stage where you stop because you don't see the actual um you don't see the you don't you're not reciprocating what you wanted i hate to put it into relationships perspective but like well people that ain't gonna work because people be staying in relationships that they ain't reciprocating half of what they're giving so (laughs) maybe that's a good correlation maybe it's not well it is personal life yep Mm -hmm. so maybe if you notice that you will sit around in a relationship you know where You're not reciprocating back what you are outputting. Granted that you're not married, because then that means you need to work that out. You know, that I'm not, I'm I can't help you in that situation. I can only help you if you're dating someone, you know, if you're dating and you're not married, I can help you there. If you are given a whole lot and you are not reciprocating half of what you're giving, guess what? Clink, 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 clink. Goodbye. be done move on go have a great life somewhere else
without them. Sorry, that's the truth. If you're married, talk to Jesus about it. Because I can't help you in that department. I can only tell you what I know. And what I know is, if I and you, yeah. Okay, back to business, selling your stuff. It ain't working and you're trying. Okay, so if we are out here, see the smoke? Oh my gosh. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Look at the smoke. 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 Easily amused. I apologize. I'm not easily amused. Easily enthused. I don't know. Who cares? Whatever. All right. What are we talking about again? Um, I don't want to waste nobody's time with an over-exaggerated, elongated conversation about something. Sorry, I'm hungry. That's the problem. I should have ate before I came on here. I should have ate before I pushed record. Because had I ate before I pushed record. Ooh, I made my own froth, baby. I'm telling y'all, take your milk. Take your milk. You know something I always wanted to do? I've always wanted to be a barista. I really have always wanted to be a I just want to try. I, I try a lot of jobs like one time just because I like to see what it's like because I think it's fun. That's what jobs are for. Jobs are for trying out things because they're fun. You know, and then, you know, pay some bills, you know. Pay yourself some bills. Okay, real talk, real talk, real talk. I don't want you to think I've just got you on here. You trying to sell some stuff. You trying to make it happen for yourself. It ain't working. What you gonna do? What you been doing? But better. Yes, I'm doing makeup. I'm at work. I do my makeup at work almost every day. If I don't do it at work, I do it in the car on my way to work because I was trying to get to work and not be late. And if the train stopped be on my way to work, it was like, <sighs> what you gonna do? I could have did my makeup in the car, but then what did I do when the train came? I don't remember. I think I was just like, oh, well, can't get past the train, so mm -hmm. what you want me to do? I'm not going to do that. Uh, yeah. You have what you have, and you got to push a whole lot harder. So I have a couple of different various mentors, and one of my mentors is like, you have to consistently try on a consistent basis. And that is where I falter, Literally. That is the one step that I don't do. I can admit that. What, you want me to lie to you? For what? That's a waste of time. I'm going to just tell you like it is. If I would have kept going after the bridal expo, calling all those people, informing them, you know. And I have the paper. If I, had the, I wish I had the paper with me right now so I could show y'all. I call the people on the list. I'm, you know, letting them know, you know, we met at the Bridal Expo, Blase Space. Oh, look at that. Look like I woke up. <laughs> Cameras really do wash your face out to the point where you're just like, am I there? Am I Am I here? Am I here? Or am I asleep? And I didn't wash my face yet? Or what is it? Um, but like I said, what did I say? What did I say? If I would have kept going when I did the expo, I would have succeeded in people buying product from me, but I stopped. I stopped probably a month after. Literally, I did. I'm not going to lie. I stopped a month after. A month after, I didn't do nothing else. I was trying to get a job because I left my Auntie Ann job. I didn't make no more pretzels. I had already resigned because I just knew people was going to buy stuff from me. And guess what? The client I ended up getting wasn't even from the expo. So I stopped. I stopped short and I shouldn't have. I should have kept going. I stopped short 
the customer I ended up getting a couple months later wasn't even a customer that I met at the expo, but I still got out there. I got out there and I tried. I tried to meet a lot of people in one space conveniently, but I didn't continue to keep the information with them and try and do anything. So that's 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 why. I put emu oil on my face and I put on hyaluronic acid serum. Mm. So the customer I did gain is because I went and stepped up my game and was letting people know that I do bridal expos. So it had its plus. It has its plus. Trust and believe. There are pluses. But are you catching the plus is the question. Are you catching the plus? If you catch the plus, you'll get it. Sorry, y'all all up my nose. There's no boogers, so we're okay. That's not doing what I wanted to do. It's getting too clumpy. Did you come in here? So, let's fast forward to four years. Let's go back to that story that was like 20 minutes ago. I'm sorry. My bad. Thanks for watching. Appreciate you. Love you very much. Appreciate what you do. Pause.
Hola, we're back for the umpteenth time. So, of course, being in customer service and working my job and my business simultaneously, I do not remember what we were talking about. And I'd like to apologize. I would like to apologize to you for not knowing what we were supposed to be saying. So... This is exactly what business is like. You have your moment of momentum where you're going, 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 going. And then suddenly, not the suddenly where you have the increase in opportunity, but somebody interrupts you while you're on a roll or not on a roll, but it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Doesn't matter. No big deal. No biggie at all. I really, really like this new little thing of taking, this is lip balm. Doing just like this. So cute. It's, it's, it's got this, it gives you succulentness. Succulent, look at that, succulent, succulent. Succulente. You can tell I'm slightly tired, slightly sleepy. I don't know. I think I didn't go to bed until about four. So I'm probably somewhat sleep deprived because then I got a random phone call at like eight this morning. So I am indefinitely a little bit tired. Yes, I just used my eye lash mascara for my brows because it works perfectly. I don't like brow combs, brow brushes. They don't do the same, you know. See, see, look at that. Look, 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 look at her. Look at her. Look at her. Look at her. Anywho. Um. For as much as I've been gotten up and sat back down multiple times since I've been sitting here, that's how business is. You're going to get interrupted. You're going to have people come and people go. You're going to have other things that just pop up and go. And then you're just like, I don't know what's happening. And I'm irritated and I'm annoyed and I'm sick of it. And I just want what I'm trying to do to finally work. I love this lip. Oh, my goodness. You can't tell me nothing. You can't tell me nothing, baby, because I am looking fly. Fly. Hi. I'm looking real fly. Real, real fly. Yeah, I should probably do some work. I'm pretty sure my boss is like, when are you going to do some work, boo boo? Because you're just on the computer. I'm about to do some work for my business. No, for real, I am. I'm seriously about to do some work for my business. Myself. Hmm. quite refreshing cup of coffee now that I added all the cream and the sugar to it. So listen, if you went all the way this far and you kept listening, all you have to do is keep going and get out there and let people know you are available. You are real. Your business exists. Don't nobody know your business exists. You think people know your business exists, but they don't know your business exists. They don't know you have what you have. They don't know. They don't know. How, how would they know? How would they know? I don't lie to myself that people know that my business exists. Because I know that I don't advertise my business. I know that I don't advertise on my, my, my social media. I know that I don't. Now, other people advertise stuff that I do. I am so word of mouth that it's almost, come on. It should be word of mouth to some degree, but there's a good portion of it that should just be, you know. You told people that you are there. 
you went out there and met people. But I, I can admit and honestly say that I don't do that part. Why? <sighs> One could say being, I don't know, relying too much on my job, I guess. If I were to be honest, yep, that's why. I rely too much on my job. I do. I can honestly say that. Because when I don't have a job or I'm in between jobs, I'll work my business. And that's the truth. Now, one might say, well, why don't you do it while you're at your job? Because when I'm at my job, I have my job and I have the bills. I know that I'm, I know that the bills are going to get paid when I work my business. I've had so many experiences of, oh, the bill is on the verge of choking me. I have to get a job. But if I would have pushed that much more on my business, guess what? I would have succeeded. It's, it's, is it is it nerve wracking? It could be slightly, you know. Some people are like, oh, the anxiety keeps me from doing it. It's not anxiety. It's uncertainty. There's a difference. Because when you're sure, you ain't got anxiety no more. And I'm being honest. I'm not trying to hurt your feelings. I'm not trying to be inconsiderate or insensitive in any way, shape, or form. It's uncertainty. Be anxious for nothing. Don't be worried. Don't do that. It's uncertainty. Because if you have, when you have certainty, you ain't worried about it. When somebody comes in and says, oh, I want to get a dress made. I've only had, since I've been at this particular job, I pivoted my business to where I did more alterations than I do custom made garments to, to, um, I don't know why I want to use the word liquidate. <laughs> That's not the word. To match the, the, the current circumstances. Although there are people who have been able to still make garments. I noticed that my design aesthetic for the last <sighs> six years is not what's out there for where my where I used to go to for my clientele. I used to go for a clientele of like prom and homecoming, you know, because because I could fit, I could fulfill what they wanted. My design aesthetic is slightly different, but what is trendy? I don't I don't do trendy. Trendy's not my thing. I, I can't stand trendy at all. Don't come to me for trendy. You can come to me, but I can't, I I I I'm not gonna be able to do what you want. I'm just not, it's not my design aesthetic. It's it's not my design aesthetic. You come, people come to me because they want something unique and different that's not out there. If it's already out there, I'm probably not the person for you. I'm not the person that you want if it's already in existence. Go where you see it. I would recommend it. Don't be afraid to tell people no. And when people keep insisting on asking you to do it, remind them. I did tell you no. That ain't going to work, though. It's not. They'll be perturbed and irritated and annoyed with you so bad. But let me tell you what you do. This is what you can do, for real. What you can do is recommend them to somebody else that you know is good and going to deliver what they want. Because I'm not going to send somebody to somebody that, like, they can't deliver. I'd rather send you to somebody... That's good. That can do what you want because I'm not going to do it. I would rather someone be more satisfied with someone else's services, making them what they want, than for me to do it and they hate it, you know? And I try to tell people that. They don't always listen to me, but that's okay. That's okay. My design aesthetic is not for trendy stuff, period. I got that from a young lady who wanted me to make a prom dress. Mm-hmm. And when it was all said and done, 
She didn't get what she wanted. I tried three different dresses to fulfill what she wanted. Didn't work. And, you know, um, her relatives said, it's not you. The dress is fine. She doesn't want what's there. And it was like, there's nothing wrong. The dress wasn't, it didn't, it wasn't ill-fitting on her. It was very nice. They were just like, your design aesthetic is not for her. Some people love, like, anything you go outside and see, whatever, if it's on the runway or at the store, you know, whatever. Either people like it or they don't. Be okay with it and move on. And I'm okay with it. I'm so okay with somebody not liking what I put together. I get, I get, I let a lady have what I put together. Now, the young lady who got the dresses made, I didn't let her keep none of those dresses. All three of those dresses came back to me. But the late, the only reason why, because that lady had bought her fabric. She bought this fabric, had me put something together. I wasn't there when the design was being put together. So in my mind, I see something totally different. And then what was put together didn't work for her. And I'm told you can keep the garment that was made. You bought that fabric. Here's all your other fabric. What, what do you want? What do you want me to do? I could have fixed it for her. But that's another story for another time, babe. Uh-huh. Yipper depper. Yep. My makeup's kind of not real cute, to be honest. Cuter than what I intended. I didn't know it was going to be so cute. I really like the YouTuber um, Patricia Bright. She wears this perfect maroon, burgundy, brownish eyeshadow. Totally copying, totally copying. I'm copying all day. It's it's just it's just delightful when I see it on. I'm like, it's perfect. It's the perfect color. Now the thing is getting it to fade up where I want it to fade. That's the other thing. I don't do makeup every day because I've gotten out of that phase of wanting to do makeup every day. I find it. I find that I can do something else with my time. So that's why I don't. But it doesn't matter. I'm just trying to blend this together. These two shades right quick. Uh -huh. yeah, it works. It works enough. It works enough for me to wear it. How about that? And it'll blend later on throughout the day. I ain't too particular about much about it. I just wanted to do something at work because I don't really have a lot of work to do today. I have work to do. I'm just not doing it. <laughs> but I really want to work my business today while I'm at work. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I know my boss see me. I know he see me. I know he's like, yeah, she better do what she's supposed to do. It better be, it better be met for the deadline when the deadline comes. How about that? Why you over there playing? Why you over there playing in makeup and on the camera? As long as it's not by the deadline, he don't care. He don't, he don't, he don't. It's met by the deadline. Do your thing. And it's right. <laughs> no, don't mess it up. It's a little heavy, just a smidge it. Just a smidge it. But we don't care. We don't care. We can take a piece of paper towel and smooth it out. Um. Try. Try again. And after you've tried again, try some more. That's what I told you. That's what I told you. It looks brighter in this camera, but in my mirror, it's darker. A lot darker. I just love the lip. Lip is giving me everything. The lip is everything. I wish I had some blush. I could use one of these on here and create blush, but I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that. So work your business, ladies and gentlemen. Work your business. Work your business. Work your business. Work your business. 
My mentor says, don't let your job have you. It's good to have a job. Nothing wrong with having a job. Just don't let it have you. Period. Point blank. I probably made that too big. Did I? No, I didn't. I did not. It's good enough. I'm not trying to do much. I just, I really wanted it subtler. It's a little dark. It's a little dark. It's a little dark. It's just a smidge dark. I had a napkin. To clean my brush off. Because again, I'm at work trying to put on my makeup, which means I only grabbed a few things <laughs> before I walked out the door or ran out the door and strolled to work. Yeah, so let's just blend this across the top. Let's blend it. Blend it. Smooth it out, get rid of some of it. Because it's, it's just a little, it's a smidget heavy baby. It's a, it's, it's a smidget on the heavy baby side. Yeah, just a teeny bit. I don't like it. It's okay. It's good enough. It's doing what I wanted to do. It's doing what I wanted it to do. And that's all we need to do. Now about your business. Okay, it took me all this time. <laughs> After you sit here and watch me do my face, put my makeup on. I don't have on any foundation at all. I don't have any concealer on, nothing like that. I only have on emu oil and hyaluronic acid. That's it. I will see if I can get more of a... Mm, the lighting is off. It's too much lighting in here. There we go. That's more what I look like right there, but it's okay. We don't care. Unimportant, if you wanted to know. I use these things right here. I used this makeup right here. And I use this from Lip Bar. I use this from the dollar store. I use this from the beauty supply store. And I use this from the beauty supply store. Oh, and I use these. Ulta. Ulta. And this, I think, is from Target. It's actually blue. So cute. Ooh, look at that. Look at what blue does. I remember this girl in high school used to put on blue something. It was real cute. Hey, girl from high school. Put on blue eyelash stuff. Oh, Lord. Okay, I'm about to end this, but not yet. Real information, real valid information. That'll help you. That'll make it easier for you. Okay, some you need. Some you need. You might need a bigger sketch pad. And a note, and a folder. You need these <laughs> to help you be a better you. You need these so that you can actually get shiggity done. Because if you don't know what you got to do, you're going to be trying to remember it all. And your brain is full of lots of lots of lots of information. Great information. And you do a fantastic, phenomenal job remembering what you remember. But it's a good idea to write some stuff down. Rather it be your ideas your agenda, your goals, weekly, monthly. This is nice. There's a lady on YouTube called Organized Money, I think is her name. She's good. She's got some, you know, you got to pay attention and watch for a long time. But she's good. She's good. Mm -hmm. So this right here, I don't remember where I got it from. Find something that does not have already pre-filled because... I get to fill it myself. I get to determine what month it is, 
It's up there. You see it? You can't see it. it. No, right there. See? It's backwards for you. But I get to determine all that stuff. I get to determine what month it is. So I can write it in myself. You might want to have a corresponding. Oh, no, it has it in here. No, it doesn't. It's empty. No, it does have a calendar. It has a. It has this. You know, the at a glance, kind of like you can see everything, and then you can put it and write it on the blank one right here. Because somebody out there got smart and said, People do not write in their calendars every day, and then you got empty pages with dates on it that you can't use because sometimes you be busy like a butterfly and forgot that you had a calendar. Uh huh. So, after you get your calendar together, you got a notebook to write all your ideas down. And you have a folder. I'm sorry. Excuse me. I'm chewing and talking at the same time. I do apologize. Disobedience is always more costly than obedience. I get, I get these quotes sent in every day to myself um go to mikemurdoch.com and they have like a little thing where you can quote sent to you every day it's nice it's good mm -hmm. very informational excuse me for chewing and talking at the same time so you got your stuff you got your notebooks you got your planners you got your pens use them it don't matter if you have it and you don't use it it's not going to work you have to use it for it to work for it to be effective it's best its best use is when it's used, when it's being in use. A calendar on your table is just a calendar. A friend of mine asked me if um, I had a calendar. And I said, no, because they don't work. You want to know why a calendar doesn't work? Because I don't work the calendar. It sits in my bag and sits in my bag. And then I'm like, oh, I was supposed to do that. But if you if you make it a part of your daily routine habit this is what's in my calendar of what i need to do it'll benefit you it'll save your life it'll help your life it'll it'll make your life work a whole lot smoother and a whole lot easier but that's up to you i can only give you information as they say one can take you to the water but i can't make you drink it that is life for all of us i am getting hungry very hungry and I'm about to eat, <laughs> but not on camera because <laughs> I don't need to. Um, what else was I getting ready to say? We have the things we need. Um, get out there and sell. Get out there and try. Don't worry about who say what. Just know that you are out there doing what you do. And if you get out there and do what you do the way you know how, as you're supposed to, everything will pan out in time. In time, it all pans out. It really does. But it's up to you to decide that. It really is. It's up to you. You can decide. Like my friend, I love my friend. Oh, my gosh. I woke up this morning and I said, oh, my goodness, it's perfect. It's the perfect, perfectest fro. I've never had a fro turn out so perfect before. Actually, I have. But. I mean, it's been a couple, it's been a minute since I've had a fro. Just like I woke up and the fro was fro the way it needed to be. Oh my gosh. In the tropics, your fro will fro. Oh my gosh. When you go to the tropics, any tropical area, oh my goodness. My fro froed so much that it was froing. My fro was froing. That's what they said. They said your fro was froing because it was froing. It was so big and magnificent and glorious. And then I tied my, I put on this like this, I put on a bonnet that was a perfect size bonnet. But I put it on the other day and I didn't do the same thing, but I put it on last night, woke up this morning and it's just like, <laughs> it's so cute. It's so perfect. I love it. I really do love it. If you don't work your business, it's not going to work. If you work your business and you don't give up when you have the challenging days, the hard days, the I didn't make no money days, weeks. If you keep going, 
and don't give up and keep trying even on your hardest days. It will pay off.